Every now and then you do a project where all the pieces come together. Every single thing on this project for me, all the cylinders fired at the same time. This was a team effort. I got to put pencil to paper, but every single person on this stage and people who are not here left their thumbprint on the music for this game. One of the things Greg's done uh, in the two games he's worked on with us is he's actually changed the way we think about writing music for games. When we commission a piece of music for a game, we get a brick. We get a piece of music that's just nonstop. And what Greg does is he breaks his music up. So he writes in sections and we have all these like cool pauses and stuff. The more we dropped those things in the game and saw them in action, it was just like a constant happy accident. I mean, that's the really no. unique thing about scoring for video games. With films, it might, you know, you might be looking at a, at a rough cut and you'll get the final hopefully by the time you're scoring, but still you have some sense of what the storyline is and where things are going. I mean, you're pretty much working blind and it's... Really it's, a, it's a plus and a minus. Yeah. It's a plus because you can write anything you want. It's right. a minus because you wish you had something to double check yourself and say, am I doing the right thing? And so you just write it, and you hope that it's right for what the game is ultimately going to look like, but you don't know. And serendipity sometimes takes its course. We had an Arhu player named Karen Han, who's phenomenal, uh, work on the score. She makes it sound so smooth and so easy, and it's not. She just makes it sound that way. In a weird way, it almost is like a human voice. It is so expressive. Anytime you hear an Arhu in, in, in a Hollywood film score, chances are really good that it's Karen. They gave us everything we needed. The score that you're hearing is, is when you add all the pieces that we put in, about 80 guys, which is a good size orchestra. And it sounds like it, and it makes a difference. And Leslie recorded it in such a way that it sounds spectacular. The reality is it's impossible to really get anything in the ISO booth to sound like the uh, strings that are out in the main room. It's just a, really a matter of getting enough separation with everything. And um, I think video games are a little different than uh, scoring for a film in that you want to be able to have a lot of flexibility in the end. Uh, the end product eventually is going to go into the game and uh, all the music has to uh, be able to be separated enough so when it goes into the game you can separate out mul multiple percussion layers and multiple brass layers. And so when we're mixing or when we're approaching the the post-production side, we're kind of looking at the end game. It's a kind of a daunting process, but once once you get one cue down and you realize this is how every other cue is going to follow, you just you just start going from there. Well, I start with the game. There's literally it's very quiet. There's no music anywhere. There's usually just gunfire. I usually start out with a completely blank canvas and a iTunes playlist filled with uh, you know Greg's music and. Uh, I just play through them and I think to myself, having played through uh, the entire game in very early stages, I kind of block out in my mind where we're going to feature some of these pieces. It's throughout everything we do, the theme is collaboration. I get credited with mixing something, Joel gets credited with mixing something, somebody comes up and says, hey John, that was a, sounds so great, the game you mixed. But really, like John said, we locked the three of us into a room for two days. It has a steel door that you can't hear through, you can't get in. There's a, a little teeny peephole, which looks in so people can see us, but we can't see anything on the outside. And you know, a really cool thing is that we, we disagree on a lot of things. But I'm trying to make the point that collaboration and, and not always agreeing can be a really good thing with big teams, and big teams are what make this thing what it is. I have the 
great advantage of working with Jonathan and Amy and the people at Naughty Dog. I have a Naughty Dog badge, I don't work for Naughty Dog. And that we get treated the way we do when we're there. We're part of the team and we get to, to experience that level of, of what the developers are dealing with and get treated like equal partners on the project. To me, that's really huge. In those last few weeks, as intense as they are, I always look back on those times really fondly.